guys, this is Cole with Regal Metal Works. I apologize, I didn't film anything last week. I was pretty busy just catching up on loose ends. We had a bunch of things going on. Uh, but I can give you some updates on what I've been working on. And this guy. Mm -hmm. Pretty much nothing. So I talked about the ATM box in a couple of the previous vlogs. I had to build and I had the picture or um, the sheets of uh, covered up. The aluminum sheets. So this is the ATM box. I got this uh, finished up over the weekend. And basically what this is used for um, is they put their portable ATMs in here and then they can deliver these to two events, um, shows or uh, music venues. Um, I don't know, whatever you could take an ATM for and set up. So they usually they put their vinyl wrap on here and it says ATM. They put a flag in here, a uh, big flag that says ATM. Uh, made it a little different. I made one of these for them last year. I made it a little bit different. I made it more like how they had originally had one made for them, but it wasn't a really good design. So I just went back. This was a lot easier for me, for me to make and a lot quicker. Just has a quarter inch plate uh, base, one by two box. It's just an uh, eighth inch wall. And then I just, instead of the last one, I welded the sheet metal to it, which is just, uh, it takes too long and it likes to warp a good bit. Um, so you have to be really careful. So I just went ahead and uh, just uh, used sheet metal screws and sheet metal it together after I cut it. And uh, that worked really I well. I literally bit into the sticker. See that? <laughs> Special K. Special K. Get them, poppers. Get them. So I ate a sticker for y'all. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, then we have another uh, project going on, uh, working with a, uh, another vendor that uh, sells these uh, vintage gas tanks. And he had these designs made up, but he didn't have anybody to weld them. I guess he originally had to weld it, but no longer was available. So um, we picked up a couple of these tanks to get welded or to weld for him. So um, hopefully that will be a, a new venture. And there's some other things like uh, some of these vintage exhausts. Um, he has uh, made up, but they're not welded, so I'll be probably welding those as well. well yay. And um, some boat hinges uh, off this uh, older uh, boat, I think from the 50s. These guys came in, they wanted hinges made. Um, these are not replaceable, they couldn't find these anywhere. They originally wanted stainless steel, and I was like, well, I can't machine stainless steel, but or at least I'm not good at it yet. Um, and then he said about aluminum, and I said, well, I can machine it out of aluminum, but until I started looking at how many times I was gonna to have to reposition this to the machine, this, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna draw it up in CAD, and I sent out the files to the laser cutter and had him cut these out for me, and then I just machined up the hinge part and welded them on. Um, tumbled it, all I have to do yet is polish this, so I'll polish this on the buffer. Um, and then I'll weld these pins, um, the heads on them so that they don't slide out. And they should be good to go. And these are all three or four stainless steel, so they won't have any problem rusting. And it should be a nice mirror finish by the time it's done. This is a locking electric locking differential out of a Jeep. The guy had it broke and cracked. Uh, let's see if we can focus in there. That line that's right here. That was completely cracked all the way through. So I, just like I do with aluminum cast, channel it out and go back and fill it with weld. Now cast is really difficult to weld because unlike aluminum, it will weld all right. You just have outgassing. You'll get a little bit of outgassing here, but your biggest issue you have is if you don't use the right filler, it will crack on you no matter what you use. So there's a little procedure that you really need to do. You need to preheat the part and you really need to post heat the part. Now in this instance, I, I started trying uh, to weld with some special uh, filler rod I have that I wanted to try that was supposed to be really good on cast, but easy TIG wire, I don't know. It didn't do crap, it just cracked right away. Let me spin this over. It's still a bit warm. You can see how big that weld is there. That's how much weld I had to put in. I V'd it out really good. I couldn't really get inside to V it out, so 
I just went back on the inside and refilled it in, which is good because it, there's a washer that fits in there and it needs to be flush. Um, but I used 309 filler wire, wire uh, stainless steel filler wire. And that's the only stuff I've ever had any luck with cast that doesn't crack. If you try and use regular filler wire, steel filler wire, it'll just crack right away. Apparently this easy TIG wire that's supposed to be for cast don't, doesn't work. But the, you need a high nickel content is essentially what you need in order to keep it from cracking. But I was able to get that. This hole, the pin, what had happened, there was a pin that runs down through there that had, I'm not sure if it broke or whatever, it wobbled out, it, it elongated this hole, so I filled in as best I could from the inside, which was really hard getting my torch in there and welding that. But I was able to fill it in, so we'll just have to take a, a, a die grinder and die grind it out to, to fit the pin so that that will slide back in there through through that hole there. You can kind of see how it's dished out here. Get my finger out of the way. It's dished out. That's where the there's like a, a washer that cups in there. So when I welded the other side, you can see there, I didn't really want to get too much weld buildup in there because that would be really hard to grind out <laughs> because it's dished. So yeah, it's a neat little project. I'm not sure how much this thing costs. I'm sure it's not cheap. Yeah, it's much cheaper to, to get it well repaired. And hopefully it'll hold up for him. He just uses it for off-roading. And I did video some of this. I don't know what I got that's good because my batteries are either dying or um, the fall got foggy in there and that might have been blurry. But we got a commission to make three more sets of these guys. These are the brake caliper adapters for this race team that I designed last year for them. So they can run larger rotors um, and still use the same calipers on the, the same carrier. Um, I have to make, I got two of these made, I gotta make a third one, and then I gotta make the mirror image of it. So they need six total, so three sets. And here's some uh, video footage of that.
Alrighty guys, that's about all I got for you today. Hopefully I'll be able to get some more footage this week um, instead of waiting a week. Uh, things are just starting to pick up and don't have time to really grab the camera and film stuff. But anyways, Dan. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to get the whole episode without saying the word. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> anyways, you can do the outro. Like. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your friends' moms and dads. I want to be all inclusive here. And your brother's mother's covered sister in law. <laughs> your brother's mother raising <laughs> covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, it's been long. Ah, see ya. So bring your A game. Cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time sipping strawberry lime. You know I wanna share.